exclusive. The 18-year-old biracial woman who says she was attacked by four men while white men while she was driving. Althea Bernstein says she was set on fire, and Alex Perez joins us with the latest on the investigation. Good morning, Alex. Hey, good morning, George. The 18-year-old says she's studying to be a paramedic, and some of those skills kicked in at the horrifying moment she was attacked. I haven't really slept, and um, I don't really have an appetite, so it's just... I don't want anyone to ever feel like this. 18-year-old Althea Bernstein says she was on her way to her brother's house around 1 a.m. Wednesday morning. She says she was stopped at a red light and listening to music when she heard someone yell the N-word. According to the police report, her driver's side window was down and she heard someone yell out a racial epithet. She looked and saw four men, all white. She says one used a spray bottle to deploy a liquid on her face and neck and then threw a flaming lighter at her, causing the liquid to ignite. She she drove forward and patted out the flames. Now, in active and ongoing investigation, Madison's mayor saying, while we are still learning more about the details, current information suggests this may have been a premeditated crime targeted toward people of color. And authorities say they are reviewing surveillance images from nearby cameras, hoping for any clues that might help them track down the attackers. Cecilia? So disturbing. Okay, Alex, thank you. Unfortunately for this liar and her corrupt enabling media, it never happened. I know, I know. Unbelievable, right? According to the Wisconsin State Journal, quote, an exhaustive search of video from the city and privately owned surveillance cameras, however, turned up no evidence of the attack. And the investigation identified a number of inconsistencies in Bernstein's story. Inconsistencies like all the city's cameras being checked and no group of white men fitting that description being found. Oh, and also there was no burning around Bernstein's car inside it or on it. And the police dog that checked the area found no evidence of accelerants that should have been there if she was telling the truth. This is all sounding very familiar, isn't it? Almost like they did a Smollett reboot and decided to recast the role as a female. Is it any wonder that there are so many of these fake hate crimes? To me, it's pretty obvious why this is happening. For one, we have this 24-7 media narrative and from the Democrat Party that white people are inherently racist by virtue of them being white. The constant fear-mongering about white people has created mass widespread paranoia. Just think about it like Bigfoot. If the media was out there every day reporting about Bigfoot, everyone would be seeing him everywhere. But instead of Bigfoot, it's racist white monsters everywhere. Two, the media only reports on racism as a white issue and buries any stories about racism or hate crimes against whites. When they can't ignore the story because it's simply gotten too big, they simply downplay racism as the cause. A great example of this would be when those black students kidnapped and tortured a special needs white student and did it while shouting racial expletives at him. The media media had to report on it because it was a big story, but what did they do? They downplayed racism as a cause. And I still remember Simone Sanders on CNN saying that she didn't believe it was a hate crime. They're still investigating. They won't classify it as a hate crime. Is this a hate crime? Well, I don't know, and, and I, I don't want to prejudge the, the, too much because, you know, frankly, even the video has so many bleeps that um, you would need to hear the, what he says. It's, you hear some of the offenders, Jeff, um, shouting F Trump, F white people. Do you think that this was politically motivated, a politically motivated crime, or are these just stupid kids? You know, I'm going to say the three words you're never allowed to say on cable news, which are, I don't know. I can't say that it's a hate crime because Chicago police won't say it. They're saying uh, F white people, F Trump. How can you say it's not a hate crime against a white person? So first I want to say this is absolutely sickening. Uh, it's I, it's unfathomable that so much hate and anger can fill up a person where they go out and they think that this is okay. And then it was stupid to do it on Facebook Live, but that's a whole nother story. So this is absolutely sickening, but I'm going to say something that's probably not very popular. We cannot callously go about classifying things as a hate crime. And who is Simone Sanders? That name sounds familiar. Oh yeah, she's a senior advisor on the Joe Biden campaign. So the media's rationalization for not reporting on these stories is that they don't want to create any negative backlash 
bias towards so-called communities of color. Which begs the question, do they want to create negative backlash against so-called white communities? And three, the media creates heroes, champions, and martyrs out of hate crime victims. There's attention to be had, money to be made, and political agendas to push forward. This liar got the attention of the national media and Democrats like Joe Kennedy, who ran his mouth without knowing any facts. Urgent work of dismantling white supremacy wherever it finds shelter. But our work is far from finished. And in the days since we passed the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act, a young biracial woman named Althea Bernstein was set on fire by four white men as she sat in her car. Elon Omar also took full advantage and spoke out before all the facts were available, obviously jumping on a story that fit all of her preconceived notions and political agenda. Even Meghan Merkel injected herself into this for some reason. You know that black lives matter. Meghan Markle continues using her platform to combat racism and inspire change, this time by making a personal phone call to a victim of an alleged hate crime. I haven't really slept and, um... I don't really have an appetite, so it's just... <laughs> Challenge, you know, for her um, right now. Johnson told Wisconsin local news channel 3000 that Megan chatted with Bernstein about, quote, the importance of self-care and allowing herself to heal adding that the Duchess, quote, applauded her for the way that she responded. Since the police and the feds started talking about their findings, or rather lack of findings, the liar and her family have stopped talking to the press. One has to really wonder why there are so many of these fake hate crimes in a country that's supposedly racist to the core. That's all for this episode. I did want to quickly remind you all that it's finally Horror Movie Month, and each week I'll be streaming a horror movie on both DLive and on Discord. So make sure to head over to the official official Drone Tech Politics Discord so you'll be aware of when all these events are occurring. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button, share, and subscribe. If you want to support this channel, you can do so on any of the links listed in the description or in the pinned comment. Thanks for watching. Keep coming back.